Hello and welcome to the new order of your source for everything anime and manga. And today we're here to talk about hunters hunting things. And one hunter in particular, his name is Kite, and he is the subject of a fair bit of confusion in good old Hunter Hunter, because I've noticed that a lot of people come away from either the anime or even the manga and they aren't exactly sure what happened to Kite. And to be fair, Kite's story is tied into two fairly complex arcs, being the Chimera Antark and the Chairman Election, one of which aims to explore the subtleties of existence itself, whilst the other explores, well, not that. I mean, I guess it kind of does with Alucar and everything, but the chairman election is more or less a, a mess of administration, which is very relevant because that mess is where Kite's conclusion takes place. So this video is going to serve to untangle all of that detail of not only what happened to Kite, but also how it happened and what is likely to happen with him in the future. And it's all going to begin with a quick round of Clown Kite, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Here we have three kites dressed in clown outfits for some reason. Doesn't matter what the reason is, don't ask questions, but two Two of these clown bros are Nen clones, and it is going to be your job to guess which one is the real kite. Now, should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the New Order View, which will result in consistent injections of hunter-based culture administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then kite will turn you into a clown. Hooray. So which kite will it be? A, B, or the other one? Make your choice now, and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it was Kite B. So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are new to our association. Welcome. Let's go ahead and fly this kite though. As the very first character introduced, not only in the Chimera Antark, but also Hunter Hunter itself with the manga, Kite is, well, he's a bit of a big deal. He has this mentor-mentee relationship with Gon, which leads to an unfortunate tragedy during the conflict with Nefapito. Fun little thing here though, that for some reason almost never gets brought up, because according to Moral Knuckle and Nov, Kite actually actually touched Pito Zen on purpose to figure out how powerful they were. This isn't clear during the actual event, and it just looks like Pito sensed Kite out of nowhere. But really, what Kite did is essentially the equivalent of poking a beehive just to find out how many bees are inside. And as it turns out, there were a lot of bees, like a critical mass of bees, really. Which is important because Gon's entire character arc for this, what, quarter of the series is about blaming himself for Kite's death because Kite had to protect him. However, the reality of the situation is that Kite effed up. He effed up pretty bad, and he paid for his own mistake by saving Gon and Killua. Which does lead to our first big mystery. The last we see of a living kite is him having activated crazy slots and having it land on number three, the mace. This is a weapon that Kite refers to as a quote, good number, as opposed to the other two we saw. But then the very next thing we see is his severed head lying in Pito's lap. So clearly the number wasn't quite good enough, but maybe it was, we'll get back to that. Now this is unknown to us at the time, but the next we see of Kite is his re birth into the world as Meruem's twin. This minuscule babby thing is then taken by Colt, who names her Reyna in honor of his sister. However, small baby then grows up extraordinarily quickly, and just with many of the ants, she recalls her past human life and chooses to adopt the former name of Kite. Now there's a lot of questions here, questions such as how. How is a very good one. Why is also a fantastic choice though. For example, how did Kite's soul make its way into a Chimera ant without going through the Phagogenesis process? And why does this and only this chimera ant appear to be fully human? That's probably the most unusual thing of all because every other ant was mixed with the DNA of other creatures. As it is, I'm not personally 100% sure that Kite is a chimera ant, which is a weird thing to say because Kite's current body was born directly from an ant, but it's weird. It's just weird and let's explore why. Firstly, it should be noted that there's no guaranteed explanation for how this phenomena occurred. I'd like to emphasize that Kite was not ingested by the ant queen. He died and his body was then left with Pito to play with, like some sort of a toy thing. So at no stage did any physical part of Kite enter the Chimera Ant process. So what we're left with is purely Jing's hypothesis, because in chapter 335, he says the following. I taught Kite everything he knows about Nen. His crazy slots has a number that only comes up when he really doesn't want to die. If he's alive, that's probably why. So it's implied that slot number three, the mace, could have had the effect of reincarnating Kite's soul in the event of death, but that is only half the story because we also need to address the new body. As two chapters later in 337, we spent quite a bit of time focusing on Koala, who as an Australian, I have to hold as my favorite Chimera ant. The only better outcome would have been to have a kangaroo ant, but sadly that did not eventuate. In any case, Mr. Koala recognizes Kite's body as having previously belonged to a young girl that he murdered. And Koala's reasoning for this was that he wanted to save the girl from the fate that he had endured of becoming an ant. So he killed her 
before the girl's soul could become part of the ant reincarnation cycle. However, her body was still consumed. So it appears that our bodiless soul of Kite found the soulless body of this here random girl. With that said, there are also plenty of other humans who died before being fed to the queen. So it was less of a destined matchup than maybe the story would proclaim. It was just a very suitable vessel that popped up in the exact time in which Kite soul was making its way back into the world. And just on the, the soul stuff for a second, Hunter Hunter does very casually confirm the existence of a soul. There's a question during the Chimera Ant talk over whether ants possess the souls of consumed humans, or if they've just inherited genetic memories in a process that I'll describe as uh, somehow. But it kind of doesn't matter because the kite situation does clear this up, as it's not possible for an ant to have inherited any genetic information from kite. It is, however, a pretty insane use of Nen, and I would propose that this is actually an invocation of post-mortem Nen. We've seen this used on several occasions in individual setting conditions designed to endure after their death. And another great example would be Pito actually, who ordered their Terps Korahatsu to dance beyond its limits, thus resulting in a terrifying single-minded Nen corpse being brought into existence following Pito's death. So I imagine that the only reason that Kite was able to achieve something as shockingly powerful as reincarnation is due to the post-mortem conditions. The Crazy Slot's mace in and of itself is almost certainly a completely useless weapon to wield. Its battle potential would have to be minimal to form part of the restrictions to invoke such a powerful effect. But the question then becomes, was it Kite's ability that was able to provide him with this seemingly almost fully human form? Or was it just a freak coincidence of biology? Why was Kite the only Chimera ant born with seemingly no properties of ant? At least no physically distinguishing qualities of ant, and it really could go either way. This could just be a sliver of human DNA that somehow avoided meshing and blending too much with every other consumed creature. Or it could be that Kite's post-mortem Nen selected that DNA and then kept it free of all sorts of crazy ant alterations. And I should also say that it's not clear what Kite believes actually happened to him, or I suppose now herself. Koala tells a very convincing story, but in the end, it's difficult to tell if Kite's buying into it or not. Kite more or less just emotionally conscripts Koala into becoming something of a slave for the remainder of his life. And it's actually kind of twisted when you think about it, because even if it is true that Kite inherited this specific girl's body, he is not that girl. As an individual, he really has no right to demand that Koala atone via serving him specifically, but look, it's, it's a big gray area. Koala is obviously not the most morally sound of individuals due to his history as a killer before even turning into a killer ant. Although it does fit with Kite's personality as we know him. For example, in the past, Kite profusely chastised Gon's actions because his ignorance led to him needing to kill a fox bear when he was young. And Gon went on to atone for that action by adopting and raising the fox bear cub. So perhaps Kite's attitude towards Koala is just a more extreme example of righting the damage caused to nature. What's also interesting is that that Jing reinforces that this entire situation is, uh, it's more or less Kite's fault. When speaking to Gon, Jing quite blatantly states that Kite took him along because he thought it would be an easy mission and he critically underestimated the severity of what was happening. In fact, Jing's exact quote is, he got cocky, it was his fault. And you know, I give Jing a lot of crap for being a bad father, but this was probably the best thing he could have said to Gon at this particular point. The kid who was saddled with this immense guilt for a death that really he had no part in causing. With that said, it's hard to argue that things have turned out too terribly for Kite. As a result of this reincarnation, he actually re-enters Hunter Hunter with a bit of a double power-up. If he is part Chimera Ants, then that brings with it a lot of innate physical advantages, as well as raw aura benefits. The ants were all unnaturally gifted when it came to aura quantity, and given that Kite was born alongside the most gifted of all of the ants, the Ant King Marowem, then that may very well make Kite one of the most powerful Nen users in the series to date. I mean, no, obviously Marowem took the bulk of that aura advantage, but I'd find it very difficult to believe that Kite didn't inherit anything at all via this process. But the other avenue we definitely need to look at is from the post-mortem Nen angle. Because yes, it's great to invoke aura to avoid death or at least use death to your advantage. But the other key factor about this is that surviving a post-mortem Nen experience results in a ridiculous power-up of all facets of Nen use. Which is pretty wild because Kite was already one of the more outrageously powerful hunters in the series. The thing that really held him back as we've explored was simply experience and personal judgment. That's the brutality of Hunter Hunter. If you make one mistake, no matter who you are, you're done. But Kite today, despite being far physically younger, is much more mentally mature. And that maturity is a very, very good combination with the double whammy Nen multiplier. Although a big question I have is whether or not Nen abilities transcend this reincarnation process. Like can Kite still invoke crazy slots or was part of the reincarnation condition the abandonment and destruction of crazy slots? I suppose it may not necessarily matter either way because Kite now has the sheer quantities of aura to casually
casually craft a new OP Nen ability if needed. I just think it would be interesting to see an amped up version of Crazy Slots. Furthermore, it would also be intriguing to see if Kite's Nen affinity has changed. Previously, he was a conjurer, but who knows what happens to that idea with reincarnation? It's completely unexplored. You know, is a Nen affinity attached to the soul of an individual? Is it more personality based, as Hisoka would propose? Or is it something that is assigned via raw genetics at birth? There's a lot of interesting potential to be explored with Kite's specific situation. And there's even a decent possibility that he's graduated and morphed into a specialist, which would in effect kind of turn Kite into what Pito was, a specialist bottomless pit of aura who can craft any ability that takes their fancy. Except in the hands of Kite, this would be put to far, far better use due to his exceptionally calculated knowledge of Nen. But also bear in mind that the next time we see Kite, he will have likely matured into a full on physical adult as well. So we've got some very rapid evolution happening, which I suppose is actually the best possible argument to say that Kite does possess Chimera and DNA. His growth is obviously far, far too quick for a standard human, which in turn means that Kite's technical classification is now that of a magical beast, which is what the Hunter Association essentially labels any sentient life that is not 100% human. Whatever the case, Kite is a character who really should not be forgotten. His existence is incredibly downplayed and treated as a, as a sort of quick epilogue. However, the implications of Kite having survived this encounter and the specifics of how that occurred may very well have created one of the most powerful Nen users that we've seen to date, or perhaps even ever will see in Hunter Hunter. Meanwhile, here is one of the most powerful Hunter Hunter YouTube based videos that we will ever see, and I want you to click it because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series. So I look forward to seeing you there.